Hey everyone, I'm Dan from jazzcomposerspresent.com, an online space where composers, musicians, and listeners come together to celebrate the music we love. I'm here today with Miho Hazama, Grammy-nominated composer, arranger, chief conductor of the Danish radio big band, permanent guest conductor of the Metropole Orchestra, and leader of her own internationally acclaimed chamber ensemble, M-Unit. Miho is here today to walk us through the differences between orchestrating for chamber ensemble versus big band. Thank you, Dan. And hi, everyone. When you hear a large ensemble in jazz industry, you can maybe think of a big band, which is five saxophones, four trumpets, four trombones, guitar, piano, bass, and then drums. But my chamber orchestra, my own orchestra, named M Unit, is a little bit different. There are three saxophone players one trumpet, one French horn, string quartet, first violin, second violin, viola, and a cello, and vibraphone, piano, bass, and drums. It is a 13-piece jazz chamber orchestra. Today, I'd like to share uh, one of the compositions for M unit, named the Time River, which is a title tune of our second album, Time River. And since this uh, big band version of this composition is also published, I'd like to share some ideas for orchestrations for both chamber orchestra and big band. This is a very simple way to start the piece. Um, having a soprano saxophone playing the main melody and accompanied by the piano. I wanted to have it this way because I wanted to feature the guest soloist on this track. In fact, this main melody soprano saxophone was played by the featured the soloist, Joshua Redman, and it's accompanied by very simple piano phrase. Now, when I worked on the big band version of this piece, I kind of wanted to go for ensemble side. So I decided to divide the accompaniment into three different parts. The top line is played by guitar, the bass line is played by tenor saxophone, and the middle part of the harmony is played by piano. And obviously, I can't let the tenor saxophone player keep playing for two minutes without any breath. So I divided that line to two tenor saxophone players to take over. So this was a very, very simple example of orchestrations. But when it comes to a climax of the piece, you have more possibilities to work on it. A great thing about chamber orchestra, there's a string section in M unit, and that they can keep note for a long time, and the violin range is quite high. So I put all of the strings and also flute in high range to keep playing the main melody. I put one trumpet player to play the counter line. So it sounds a very much of a chamber sound with not brassy 
uh, elements in the ensemble. One more example in the bar 249. This is a challenging point for me that I always have to pick up different instruments for uh, harmony for more than three. For this section, I wanted to have a, a little bit more brassy harmony, but we only have one trumpet and one French horn here. So I decided to put French horn as the top of the harmony because I really wanted to hear French horn sound in the harmony. And then put the trumpet underneath of the uh, French horn. But these are the only brass instruments that I have in this orchestra. So I decided to put the cello below these two instruments. So these are some orchestra tips in the M unit. When it comes to the big band arrangement, um, there's no strings that can play very long and very high. Right at the climax in the bar 244, I put the main melody to all of the alto saxophones, tenor saxophones, and the soprano saxophone, and the trumpet two and four to avoid it to get too brassy. You know, in a way, it's more sound from saxophones. But I still kept one line, counter line from the trumpet. So that, that lead trumpet player now is playing that counter line by himself. So it's not too strong, but you can still hear that trumpet counter line. When it goes to bar 249, you can see uh, two tenor saxophones and the baritone saxophone happily playing in the same section for the harmony. But I wanted to get the French horn sound and a big band as well. So I decided to add trumpet four to double the uh, tenor one line so that the top of the harmony is played by tenor one and the trumpet four, and the rest of the harmony played by tenor two and the virgin saxophone. And one note about about 249, you can see that the soprano saxophone is playing a very, very high note, but I didn't want to keep that high note for a long time because it's very hard for him to keep playing that high note. So I kept the alto saxophone, trumpets to play an octave a lower or two octaves lower, but I didn't keep soprano saxophone that long. I hope it was interesting for you and uh, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for watching today's mini lesson. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Drop any questions, comments, or suggestions for future videos in the comment section down below. To watch our full length events and participate in live Q and A's with our presenting artists, head over to jazzcomposerspresent.com. Thanks and we'll see you next time.